Welcome to another Your Lurgan podcast. I'm Dom McKeown. And I'm Michael Scott. Out of, um, out of the house, at long last. Out of the house, yeah. Well, we're still keeping our distance. We don't... No, we do. We, 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 we trust <laughs> you. Oh, whoops. Too late. Shouldn't make fun of such circumstances. People stuck in their homes because of the similar si- yeah, situation. Yeah, very true. We're out and about today. You may recognise the location if you've been on the streets of Lurgan. We're just uh, behind our uh, parish church of Shankill here. Uh, at Palomas, just outside it, and uh, permission from uh, Palomas to to be here. And everything that we say is uh, on uh, behalf of your Lurgan. Uh, we're circumspect, so uh, nothing uh, that we say will be as a reflection of the views of uh, of uh, the folks who are in Palomas. We're just uh, happy to have this space, just to just to clarify that, just in case anyone wants to uh, to say any different. A very interesting week for news in all sorts of places yeah. and spaces. And, uh, well, we'll let you roll with, with what the stories have been. Well, we'll start off with um, probably what's been one of the bigger stories. Um, and I'm looking at them right now is the flags in the town that um, have been put up the button. And quite a reaction to the story we wrote yesterday uh, regarding the Alliance Party who complained to the police who are just behind us here um, that the um, button was being erected around the town. Now, um, their complaint related to um, a, a forklift truck, I believe, that was um, blocking the road, they, they alleged, and also that um, they didn't have permission to put um, flags or button or emblems on uh, Department for Infrastructure property. So um, the police came out and looked at it, and the yeah. spokesperson told us that they didn't think anything untoward was happening. But the, the quote was, um, no offences were detected. Um, was the line we got from the police. Um, so we'll have obviously been talking to the Alliance Party about why they want to do this here. The Alliance Party, of course, they would say that they believe that um, the town centre should be a neutral space and show me eye flags or emblems up about the place. They're all for people celebrating their culture, but um, for, the, for those unionists and loyalists who um, believe that putting flags up and what and this is part of their culture, they obviously feel very saddened that this has come to this, that the, the political parties are from the police. That's what one such source told us. Um, so yeah, that one's um, received a lot of reaction on social media over the last few days, so anybody who wants to see that, take a look on our Facebook page. A bloody event we all there from, from all sorts of sides and shapes. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's one that's got people talking anyway. I mean, people obviously have very strong views on this either way. Um, but... Um, yeah, I think it's a story that's going to keep rolling over the summer as well, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. We usually have to say this is the time of year for such stories to, to emerge. It is, it is. Uh, we're sitting here, I mean, it's the weekend of the parades that uh, to commemorate the Somme. You'll soon have the Mini 12th, I think, is here in Lurgan next Friday night. I could be wrong on that one. And then, of course, the 12th of July is not too far away from either. And then you've got what would have been traditionally a bit of a flashpoint with Drunk Peace Sunday coming up as well, which I think is actually today, this Sunday. I can't remember now. But um, yeah, lot, lots of uh, commemorations and um, celebrations was the Unis, um, community would call them as uh, taking place over the next month. The point that might be made, uh, worth making is that the Psalm was uh, a circumstance that all members of uh, the community should, uh, should nod their head towards the fact that uh, people from all communities here in Lurgan at the time offered uh, their sons uh, for sacrifice. That's right. They didn't realise it was sacrifice at the time. We commemorate that in, uh, I think we've said this before, in St Peter's uh, Church, where there are two altars dedicated to those who sacrifice. It doesn't say that they're one religion or the other. So there is a, there has to be a nod towards that. Um, and in fact, I don't know if you've been following, but uh, certainly uh, the person who was the Deputy First Minister, I don't know what the position is now, of course, with the the things going on uh, was at memorial service for the song. Um, so you're talking about Michelle O'Neill. We're talking about Michelle O'Neill yeah. here, who is now first minister de- designate. I think is her designate. title. I yeah. mean, there's an argument there in itself. We we can go down this road forever and ever and ever. But it is to reflect that it's it's not ownership by anyone, by any shape or form. Uh, respect is all I suppose that one one can offer at this stage. Respect's a two-way street. I think, um, I think, you know, a lot of people 
need to see things from both point of views. And um, yeah, it's um, well, we'll see how things pan out over the next month. Um, it could be, I'm, I'm fearful that it could be a busy month for me, news wise. That's, that's all I'll say on that. It, I suppose it, it gives me an opportunity to, to talk about some of the comments. I'm not here to defend or, or, or stand up for one side, other, or otherwise. The comments are there. It's up to the individual to be as circumspect as they want to or otherwise. But it also reflects another situation uh, that emerged last weekend. Uh, you know I've been at the football, and we mentioned this last night on a, on a, on a, on a, on a uh, last uh, on uh, Thursday evening about uh, the amount of abuse that was uh, designated online to an individual from uh, the towner, a uh, young footballer, uh, Jaron Kelly. And uh, whatever the offence was, whatever the circumstances was, we're still waiting to hear what the actual charges were. Well, we know what the charges were, but we're actually here, still waiting to hear what the decisions were. But yet, the amount of abuse that was directed at that individual and his family about an incident was beyond the realms of, of, of craziness. You can't tell anyone to stop doing it. You can't stop keyboard warriors who think they're doing this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. But you really should be circumspect yeah. about someone's mental health and well-being. I think that's a big concern. And it's no different, actually, in making comment about what you feel about many things. I f I'm really uncomfortable with how social media it started off as a, a place to connect with people has now turned into a place for vitriol and comments that just go beyond the pale. Like, like what happened in that incident we're talking about here? This, this incident happened, or just, was it wasn't half time during the match on It was Saturday? actually at the end of full time, no? Oh, sorry, at the end of full time. Oh, my yeah. apologies, you're right. Um, you know, it, it shouldn't have happened. I, mean, I think everybody involved would, would agree with that there. It was a moment of madness, and it's something that will always be associated with said Blair but um, you know for people that go on social media uh, certain high ranking people as well we know who we're talking about here we'll, we'll not name names but um, to go in and suggest the police should get involved in something that's to happen in a sporting arena and for people to lose their jobs and stuff like that there I just think that's ridiculous you know, it, it, it's, look it shouldn't have happened let's make that clear very very but once again uh, you know but it's a sporting arena, it's a controlled area. Things happen that, that shouldn't happen. Now, I'm not saying that that means, you know, it, you know uh, there, there, there's some punishment for it. There, there's semi precedents in, in, yeah. in, in uh, soccer too, um, where incidents have happened. And I can think of one in particular that happened in the last year or two in a different club than, than uh, you know, Glen Alvin or whatever. Uh, I, I let social, social, or let the justice uh, that. Uh, happens within clubs mm -hmm. take its course yeah but uh, there, there are there are instances of course where you have where, i mean i, I think of the gary canton incident when he was given jail time remember for kicking out a fan um so i suppose there's a precedent there but like at the end of the day if that's going to happen the, the the police will decide themselves or because they'll get plenty of evidence so for people on social media to go crying and oh this man needs to lose his job this man needs to you know but throw in jail for a long time. That's not up to you. So let let the judge and jury sort it out, not you. Have your opinion. You're welcome to it. You don't have to share it. And if you do want to share it, you don't just have to kind of stick a knife in, if you choose the expression. Anyway, we'll never solve that one ourselves. Mm. We're going to talk now about um, a story which we put out on Friday morning um, about <laughs> the cost of living. My favourite subject. That. Uh, um, Here comes the blame game. Oh no, no, well, to be fair, I'll, I'll not play a blame game on this one because I think it's been well rehearsed. Um, this is a story about people who are living with food allergies. This survey has been conducted by one of the universities down in Dublin and Queens uh, for Safe Food. They are the food, good food standards and stuff like that. But um, Living with a food allergy, a family in Lurgan, it'll cost them uh, £1,400 a year. A year. Um, that includes medical costs, the cost of missed days from work, um, food costs were also said to be significant um, and the only interesting facts I found from that there was that um, you know, if it, for example an adult you know, is suffering from say a celiac or whether they're um, any gluten free food or whatever, 
uh, they would bear the brunt of about 40% of that there, and then the rest is borne by the health service. So it's obviously an issue that's costing a lot of money to in the public purse. Uh, but one thing I found very interesting, it's all in one of the comments, actually one of our readers put underneath, that they had been in the shop and had seen a loaf of gluten-free bread. Have you seen this comment? I have I have seen this comment, yeah. yes. How much was it for a loaf of gluten-free bread? Four, four pounds fifty or something. Four pound fifty-five. And she brought it home and it wasn't very nice. Uh, well, the, the point might be, uh, really, and I saw the comment, it's not fair to if the person has the chance to offer Regardless, uh, that's the price you put on it. You have the option to take it. If it doesn't taste nice, well, I don't say yeah. it, say it says what, anything that's going to taste nice. It's there for a purpose. You might but not what, like that. But what, what if you are that person who needs that there and it's four fifty five? Well, that's that's quite expensive. That's it's what, quite expensive. That's expensive. what three, three the times the price of normal. Of. The expense is one thing, but the taste of it, if you're not expecting it to be that taste, mm. is another story. Perhaps that's how all of it is react. Uh, material tastes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I've never I, tried I it myself, know. to be honest. I don't know. No, I know there's a lot of gluten-free beers and all out there. I've had one of them, a couple, a couple of them, actually. Um, they're quite nice, but just not for me. But uh, no, there's people out there who obviously need that food, and it's costing them a lot of money to, to you know, to live that life, I suppose. There's a request going out there for a little bit of help in relation to that, so... Um, yeah. It's a funny, it's a funny thing. Well, it's a stagger new that it's going to cost the family £1,400 a year more. It's incredible. Um, we, we take for granted that if we if we don't have these circumstances and situations, we don't have to worry much, you know? Yeah. It, 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 what, what do you do about it? You, you, you can go along and blame this one and that one and all the rest, but, but the people still need the help. They do. People do need the support. And you're saying about it having to come out of uh, the, the purse of, of whoever it might be. That's what the purse is there for. That's why. That's why. Uh, really, the, the the cry should be not to, uh, to to clamp down on on your spending, but to to increase the opportunity for that support. And if that yep. requires more payment of some sort or redistribution of where that money goes, well, that's where that money should go. Oh yeah, no, I think you're right there. Um, you know, as I said, it's about sixty percent being paid by the government, so should there be more? Well, who knows? Who knows? I'm Not sure, us. I'm sure you have your <laughs> thoughts as to what we're saying. Indeed, anything that we're saying, if you have your comments and thoughts, we'd love to hear them. Uh, Infoyourlurgan.com is the easiest way to get them. Or you can put a comment below that. But do be circumspect if you can. But who am I to tell you nice. what's right? Just be nice. Just be nice. It doesn't take much money to be nice. No, it doesn't. Do it. Well, unless you're making up for something, in this case, it might. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's one for the microscope book of uh, making up to the wife. Anyway, um, yeah, our, our next story we're going to talk about... I can't is, wait for your philosophy podcast. Oh, God, no. It should be a good one. No, no, it, it'll, it'll be very... It'll be looking on Amazon for cheap stuff. Anyway, I'm sorry, not cheap stuff. Anyway, uh, our next story... Um, so actually, an interview Johnny has done, um, our deputy head of digital content. Um, yeah, I noticed, I noticed Johnny got this job. Uh, but I'll come back to that when you I'll finish. I'll refer Johnny Founder first, so that's that. Finders no, keepers. No, I, I was just thinking of, you know, you get me to do all that. Well, you don't really, but yeah. he gets the attractive ladies to talk to. That That's the kind of position I'm, I'm, I'm coming from. Got, he's, he's recently married as well, Johnny, so um, yeah, he, he's, yeah. you know, we'll have to... T- tell us know. a story. Anyway, we'll tell move us on. A story. Johnny um, has been speaking to Anushka Black, who's uh, from just up the road in Donstown. Um, she's a 33 year old mum uh, who is going to be competing in the, I have to get the title of this right, the Miss, oh, sorry, the Royal International Miss Pageant. So she's going to be competing on the world stage. Um, she was Miss UK up until, sorry, she, she was named Miss UK in February 2020. And then because of COVID and stuff, her crown then had to be passed on to somebody else. But then they, she was um, given the title then of Miss Northern Ireland. Um, so she's been able to compete in this competition. Uh, so she's been telling us all about what to expect and what, what why she enjoys uh, taking part in these competitions, um, these beauty passions. But, and, and this one actually has like a sort of philosophical angle to it as well. So it's not just about your know, beauty. It's all there's chest rate essays and there's different things she has to take part in. Uh, but she also suffers from endometriosis as well. So she's been talking a bit to Johnny about that there. And I think we can actually see a little bit of that footage right now. Oh, it's 50-50, to be honest, we've been waiting that long to go 
I already feel like I've won. Like I always said, my personal pageant goal was to stand on an international stage and say my name and then my country. And like, that's it. I just want to represent my country on an international stage and Royal Inter International Miss is huge. So that already, I've already like ticked all the boxes. Um, and I just want to meet everybody. I just want to have fun. But there is that little bit of, I would love to make history like Northern Ireland have never had an international title ever and Ireland was 2003 when Rosanna won Miss World um we've had loads of placements and loads of girls doing really really well um Anna placed top six and is Miss World Europe and um, this year so it's just pushing that extra extra little bit just just to get that crown home hopefully and then inspire so many other girls to to follow in my footsteps, hopefully. And uh, we've mentioned your family, but you also have big support from friends and even the local community and, and maybe the other pageants you, you, you've come up against. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of my close friends now I have met through the pageant community um, because it is such a hobby that you don't really understand unless you're in it. Some people think you know, it's all bitchy or everybody's like to sabotage each other and it's not like that at all. Um, so a lot of my close friends have competed nationally, internationally as well, and they can understand. They've helped me training. They've helped me to events. You know, we've, we've had Zoom calls and walking, giving each other like big gifts and support. And yeah, like ev everybody, everybody's behind me. So the support I've received is just has just been incredible. It's been it's it's been touching. It's been really really touching to have that much support and to have so many sponsors as well. Good man, Johnny. Interesting, good, good. interesting story. Yeah, lovely girl, and uh, all the best to her. Hope she does really well in the competition. Um, you know, and, yeah. Let us know how you get on. Well, we keep an eye because I think you can actually live stream it, so we'll maybe put a link out to that as well. Whenever it happens, so yeah. You've been busy yourself. You've been busy yourself. Well, busy-ish, busy-ish. Uh, talked to some girls at the, the, I think it went out on Monday about an event that'll be happening uh, next Friday. Uh, in Fan Jones. I think we mentioned it last week in the podcast. I think we did, yes. And we've really got well, a chance. again though, really good. Really, really, a good mission. Lovely people, uh, lovely mission. Uh, great support from, from Fan Jones and uh, Mr. Morrow for allowing me to have that space. Uh, brings a bit of life actually to um, the centre of the town. I mean, you're not, you're not all pub goers, you maybe don't believe in drink and all the rest of it, but it's bringing life to, to a place where there's none. I mean, there are other uh, events happening around so it's good from that point of view and the whole purpose of it all is lovely it's helping Macmillan uh, cancer support mm -hmm. uh, so really really nice the girls um, they were a, a bit concerned before the piece went out actually because they, they, they were kind of conscious of oh, did I do this should I say that and, you know I'm a bit, a bit scared about it all but they loved it and they shared it widely Hundreds and thousands of people have seen it. With well, really good really figures in that story, I don't want to give them away if it's our rivals, but they were really good figures in that one, yep. Remember her for just being lively and, and such a beautiful voice and petite and just just beautiful person. And also to raise as much money in her name to help everybody out there that's going to go through this for we've gone through. And are you going to sing an individual song yourself? Because I know the two of you sing together. We sing a couple for Sarah, um, but we do do individual songs. <laughs> yeah, it's towards the middle of the night though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So even though it's going to be a certain amount of sadness, there's going to be joy and celebration and all of that. Yeah, because Sarah wasn't an unhappy person. Sarah was lively and bubbly, and we want everybody to come and enjoy themselves and have fun. There will also be raffles. Yeah, the raffles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you could always raffle me to sing a song to you. <laughs> no one will want to win that one. Well, you never know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Best of luck in the, in the memory of your daughter. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, a really good piece out there. So, yeah. Uh, um, if you are on our homepage of our website, go down to the gallery, but at the very bottom, you'll be able to find that down there. Uh, see if you're having to scroll through the endless Facebook posts.
but uh, yep. Um, just just to mention the story we covered last week, and you had some pictures out this week too. Oh yeah, from the cavalcade. The cavalcade sent us some pictures, and they had a. I think the Northern Ireland Kidney Association had their annual general meeting on Wednesday. Uh, I was a little bit naughty because I promised to do them a composite video, but they did say thank you so much for the coverage that we did bring them. Uh, and they were very pleased with I, the response, not I, just of that, but of the people who turned up yeah. and supported their event. I was very sorry to have missed it. Only had a, a prior engagement, I would have been on it myself, but um, no, it, was, it looked really good. I enjoyed watching the footage, so yeah, well done everybody involved in that. Um, we'll go back to the GAA, because when you were out last night, or sorry, Thursday night, um, <laughs> talking about uh, the launch of a new competition, wasn't it? Yeah, an under-19 competition. Um, it's the Michael Tag Memorial. Um, under 19 teams from all over, uh, some teams from Ahagallan, Clan of Gale, uh, Clan Earn, and of course uh, the uh, team themselves, Wolf Tones, they have a fine pitch out there, it's fabulous. I reveal that I played against Wolf Tones as a, a 17 year old. Unfortunately, I was uh, in an under 16 team at the time. Right. <laughs> and I played in goals. Oh dear. So I was. Out of position, hadn't a clue, but I did make one or two good saves, but that was another story. I, I have to tell you my story about the, the my one and only time in playing competitive sport. Well, sorry, it wasn't actually my one and only time, there was another one, but uh, I played in goal hockey for Bambridge Academy. Um, when was it? I must have been about fourth year or fifth year. And uh, the, the game is abandoned, was abandoned midway through because somebody got whacked up the face with a ball and lost a couple of teeth from the opposition oh, team. Goodness. Uh, that, so I maintain a record of being the only goalkeeper in the history of Bambridge Academy, I think, to um, keep a 100% or clean sheet record. So there you go. For 45% of the game, that's not yeah, bad. I'll, I'll take bit. that. I, I mean, take it, it. I would it take all that. Counts. I mean, because you have to wear all the padding and all that sort of stuff too, because it's kind of serious Oh, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't like fancy getting a ball to the face like, but no, no, I, hope, I hope that fella who ever got that ball to the face is keeping well now. I hope so. Anderson something. So that, that's happening, it's going to happen uh, in the finals, I think, on the 10th, which is what? Yeah, next weekend. It is next Sunday, isn't it? Next Sunday. Yeah. I can't believe it's, going to, it's that time of year already. Whether the school holidays. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Football then. Glen Avon. Busy week at Glen Avon. Controversial week at Glen Avon as well, some might say. Um, club captain, uh, James Singleton, sold to Glen Torn. Uh, for an undisclosed fee, I'm not quite sure how undisclosed that fee is, or what, what exactly that fee is, but um, yeah. That's why it's undisclosed. That's why it's undisclosed. So, but do you know why? People always ask why the clubs not give away the transfer fee, particularly part-time clubs like ourselves. But if we were to turn around and say we received, and I'm not saying we have by the way, £100,000 for a player, and then we, are, we need to go out and find a replacement for that player, the teams that are the looking to sell will whack put their the price up. up. It's yep. funny, that's how the, uh, the football across the water works. Yeah, exactly. So, so Sorry, how, I'm, how getting, you... I'm getting serious Gazetta Football Italia guy, or vibes here. Do you remember, you ever watched that on TV back in the 90s? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with your man, James Richardson. James Richardson. And Gaza occasionally, like, sitting, having coffee and talking about football. <laughs> Need a newspaper and, you know, an ice cream that gradually disappeared the throughout the show. The doesn't stretch, stretch so. to sending us to Rome or Naples for a coffee, but I know. there you go. Um, so yes. How, how important, can I ask, how important was he as the captain? And why does a club sell someone who apparently would be that important? So, uh, how important was James Signal as a player? Well, he was your club captain. He was, he's been at the club. He's been in the first team for nine years. He would have been due a testimonial year next year. Um, so I mean, and like, aside from a couple of bad injuries, he was almost ever present. So he was a key player for the team. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Why was he sold? Well, he was in the last year of his contract. So in January, because of the way things worked out in football, he could have walked away for free. Well, he could have agreed to walk away for free at the end of the season. Um, he wanted to go and play full-time football, which he was being offered at Glentoran. There, so do lies the secret. There you go. And I, he's probably getting a good deal with Glentorn more than what you'd be offered at Glenavon. So um, the club was left in the position. Do they take a gamble and see if they can talk him in the stand over the course of the next six months? Or do they just cash in um, on a player who has already made it clear that he wanted to go? So that's what they've done. 
this past in. I have no idea of, of the machinations of uh, your particular club, but this is a problem for all sorts of clubs, isn't it? And it, and it comes down to the desire of the player, the uncertainty and all the rest. It's very difficult to be judgmental from the outside and say, well, you should have done this, you should have done the other. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they've done the best for what they thought. Well, that, that's, the what, that's what Gary Hamilton told us, you know, that this move was made in the best interest of the football club. So. I suppose that's very true. So the, the, they've also sold, um, well, they haven't technically sold, but the, we have received a donation for Danny Perkins. Um, regular viewers, well, maybe not regular viewers of the podcast, but people who will uh, be aware, uh, Danny Perkins was a striker who played for Glen Avenue, and three or four games in the start of this season decided that he didn't want to play for Glen Avenue anymore after signing a three year deal. Anyway, um, he um, has now signed for Glen Torn after signing a contract with Glen Avon, or an agreement with Glen Avon saying that he wouldn't sign for any other Premiership club. So um, I think bottom line is basically Danny has had to make a donation to Glen Avon in order to get out of that agreement. So that's been one of the other talking points of the week as well. And all, coming in, on the other hand, uh, is former Ar Antrim GA player Owen Bradley. Who is uh, who assigned from Corey and he was released by Corey um, at the end of the season. Uh, is he Antrim or Derry? Derry, you're right. Sorry, I'm getting Derry, confused yeah. with Matthew Fitzpatrick, who also plays for us. Very, sorry, very sorry, Skinner. Uh, yeah, yes, Antrim. Yeah. Or sorry, Derry, Derry, yeah. Derry. Um, so, yeah, Skinner played at the club before. Um, won an Irish Cup with Glenavon, played in Europe every season. He was with Glenavon. Uh, and then helped Glen Avon whenever he went back to Coleraine the following season by winning the Irish Cup which got Glen Avon in Europe through the league placing. So hopefully we'll get a wee European trip out of him this year again. So good, good man Skinner, great to have you back. So he's a popular, a popular side. He is, he it. actually is, he's, he's yeah. a great guy. Um, we have an interview with him which we can play a little clip of. I'm afraid we don't have subtitles, you might need some. Welcome back to the club, I'm sure you're delighted to be back. Plenty of that, it's good to just get on the line there. It went raving really quick to be honest with you. Just uh, last week after at least McCoy, yeah, there's oh, two or three offers, but once I get spoken to Gary and that there, it's kind of had my mind made up, you know. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, you have a bit of a point to prove as well. Ah, I do, a little, well, I do and I don't. Like, it's just, as I say, there's no hard feelings with Corey, but it's just the one that probably the way they're going to be playing and stuff, so, you know, they probably don't need as many strikers as they did, so. So once uh, Gary gave me the opportunity to come here, I jumped at it, you know, I'm looking forward to getting started. And an opportunity as well, I suppose, to see an old few or a few old faces as oh, well. I, I, see, I know a few of the boys anyway, and I was then meeting Adrian and Fraser and them there. I know all them boys from last time was here, so I hope this time, that this stunt here can be as successful as the last one, I'll be happy enough. Yeah, well that's what I was going to say, because I mean, I think every year you were here, we qualified for Europe, from right in thinking. Yeah, yeah, so and then you did us a favour, and if you left us the fall year, you scored the winning goal in the Irish Cup, right. well, not the winner, but the, the third one, they were got us in the Europe that year as well, right. so nah. I'm sure. No, I say, look, I'm looking forward to it, and I say, hope to be a good season, and say, the boys are well, good quality, like, we played Glavin two or three times last year, and the bit is easy enough, you know, I know the quality's in the change room, so hopefully I'll add to it, and say, hopefully I'm for a good season. Yeah. There's obviously going to be questions, you saying, you know, why are we signing a striker who's 38 and all this here? But I mean, I'm sure you've no no concerns at all. You're fighting, no, fit and ready to no, go. I'm fit to, I, I give anybody as much ball as they want. You know, I mean, age is only a number. You know what I mean? Say, guys, as he said to me, he says, if you're playing well, you'll play. You know what I mean? So I love expecting no favours from nobody. I say, just looking forward to getting started, you know? Do you think they need subtitles for this podcast? What do you think? If you look uh, if on your YouTube settings, are you to find set or subtitles on it? Um, I don't know if they're most accurate, but I'd say they get 90% of what we say right. Sorry, could I watch that on subtitles to see yeah. if I got everything that you said there, mate? We're, we're going to get somebody in to do sign language as well. We cannot send back any of your pictures type thing, you know. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all the news in the sport. Well, not all the news in the sport, there's loads more, actually. That's all we're going to talk about in this podcast. Um, except to say one other thing as well. Uh, you'll notice over the next few weekends we're, we're bringing out a couple of new sections. Um, well, one's returning, one's new. Um, a new motor section. New, uh, every, um, yeah. um, all the latest motor news, reviews, and whatnot by one of our colleagues up in our Korean Times office, or Korean Chronicle office. I'll have to do that again, I can't say Korean Times. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all the news and sport we're going to talk about on this podcast. Um, except to say, um, keep an eye out over the weekend. You may have already seen we're going to have a couple of uh, new sections 
um, over the next few weeks. Starting off with Motors, um, one of our colleagues up at the Korean Chronicle, a uh, guy, uh, Jason, who, Jason Craig, um, does great motor reviews um, and he'll be doing one for us every week. Uh, letting us know all the latest motor news and views. So if you're a petrol head, that's one to keep an eye out on. And uh, a property section as well. With, with, with this new section and it's being petrol head, will it, will it go up in, in value or price uh, as all a section it, because of the price of petrol and diesel going up? See for you, Donna, it'll cost you nothing. Oh, thank you, that's good news. Um, and our viewers too and listeners. Yes, yeah. um, uh, yes our, new, our new property section, our first property by the way, is one just down the road here. Uh, down the lock road, it's class. You want to have a look at it. It's got a swimming pool and everything up. Um, so worth taking a look at. If you've got a spare five hundred thousand pound, it's yours. That's uh, to be uh, to up and coming. Lots of lots of development on on the year there in front. Yeah, Congratulations yeah. on the good work you're doing. Thanks very much. It's been it's been good fun. i am really enjoyed doing it. I hope you're all enjoyed reading our stuff too. Yeah, well, there certainly are. The numbers are coming in. The people are coming in. You're coming in. Thank you for looking, watching, sharing whatever you do with our papers uh, on your lurk. And I'm, I'm saying that as a contributor to it, not as the editor. Um, I'm saying on his behalf. But thank you uh, for watching this and for sharing it and for your comments. If you want to make comment, info at yourlurgan.com or indeed you can put it on our Facebook page as it were. The Twitter and all the rest of it are out there too, aren't they still? They are, they're all at your Lurgan. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, what else are we on? YouTube, I think I said YouTube, they're all there anyway. Go and search at your Lurgan, you'll find us. By the way, before we finish up, can I just say, let nobody ever say that Lurgan is dead on its backside. The amount of traffic and people about this place today is mad. Great to see. Absolutely. Uh, you're watching this on a, on a Sunday morning. We're recording it uh, for, for uh, relative purposes. And it is busy. Um, ones will g give a grape here and a grape there. Could be busier. Could be more things happening. Watch the space because we're hoping to hear more about that development. We're looking to see uh, perhaps in particular that the, the businesses in the town get together. As you know, there's an active kind of push to, to make that happen. The town manager, uh, uh, Helen Donnelly, is, is active in, in, in pushing uh, the idea and getting people together. And the businesses are slowly but surely coming together and hopefully coming up with initiatives and ideas and all sorts of things. We hope to report on that more, uh, more in the coming weeks and months. So uh, more news to come. So that's about a wrap. I'd look to the time clock, except that I can't yes, actually it. <laughs> see it actually from this position. But we're just beside it here. Uh, we're just uh, adjacent to the uh, Shankill Parish Church. And we're also in uh, the folds of uh, the blinds that overlook us here at Paloma Cafe. Thank you for allowing us to be outside today and for the, Indeed, for the, the tea and the coffee uh, that we're enjoying. We're going to pay for it now, we promise you. Uh, do, uh, if you have a suggestion, make a suggestion. If you'd like us to come and uh, run the podcast from where you are, maybe you have a contribution to make as well. We're trying to develop how the podcast looks, feels and sounds. So do keep us informed of your thoughts on that. For now, that is this week's Your Lurgan podcast. I'm Donald McCone. And I'm Michael Scott. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>